I've been a wildlife photographer for probably 30 years now, and I've filmed animal behaviour all over the world. But there is really nothing I've seen to match what happens here on Otmore, which is about three miles from my own back door. It just knocks you sideways. It is almost inexplicable, and tonight should be perfect. Late in the afternoon, small groups of starlings begin their journey back to the reeds and marshes that sheltered them the night before. Starlings are long-distance daily commuters. They'll travel up to 30 miles to get to their chosen roost. And they follow invisible aerial corridors, snaking through the countryside, avoiding the turbulence which is going to slow them down. They all come together to stay warm and safe in a large group. As daylight wanes, small clusters become enormous flocks called murmurations a name possibly derived from the sound made by half a million beating wings. And you'll see them gathering in the air, up to 300,000 individuals, all in one flock. They're very intelligent birds, and they'll be checking out the roost site, making sure there's no predators around. Any raptors or foxes will be thoroughly specked out before they settle. After completing their initial survey of the heath, the flocks gather for the final time, and like a massive organism, they flow gracefully through the twilight sky. If a hawk or falcon approaches, it is often confused and driven off by the sheer mass and movements of the flock. And when you look through the lens, you just can't believe that they won't crash into each other. And then they twist and turn, come really close. The sky almost goes black with the density of the flock. Then you can hear this roaring noise in the air. And then suddenly they'll rain down like giant black hailstones. It is an astonishing thing to see as they take to the roost for the night. So, who decides whether to turn left or right, or to form a giant sphere or a jumping lion in the sky? Who sends the message that it's time to dive back into the reeds for the night? And how is it transmitted to a hundred thousand birds in an instant? Maybe we'll never have all the answers, and that's all right with me, because every time I come here on a winter evening, I still get the chills and I'll still be amazed, and I'll walk home thinking, how wonderful is that?